All right, guys, how you doing? We are in the next episode about our arch top series, and I put in a play that's called Fake Luthier, and there is a, oh, what happened? A link to it right up there, a playlist, The Fake Luthier. That would be me. Hey, I'm going to give a shout out to my friend Derek Hicks. Derek Hicks. He's one of my partners out there in Australia. And um, I like that name, Derek. You know why? Because you can drill a drilling rig, a hole, a oil well, a gas well, uh, but you need a drilling rig. And what's the big part of the drilling rig sticks up in the air? That's right, the Derek. The Derek. So, in honor of my partner, Derek Hicks, the matchbook of the episode is, what am I doing? Oil Patch Liquor and Deli. Oil Patch Liquor and Deli. I don't want to get into too much detail here on this part, but yeah, Oil Patch Liquor and Deli. And I am wearing my Oil Feel Worm hat. Pruitt Tool Company. See them Derricks on there? Do you see them? Do you see them right there? Yeah, in the background there. Anyway, yeah, check that out. I got my, wow, I got my money's worth on this lawnmower accident, didn't I? Anyway, what else do I got here? Oh, I want to give a shout out to my friend Frank Goldwasser. He was telling me a story. I was sitting there in utter disamazement. And somewhere in that story was a reference to Hound Dog Taylor. This is the album, the music of the episode. And I'm going to give you a link down below. Have fun getting this one. It's rare. but And you're going to get your money out. But anyway, Hound Dog Taylor, thank you, Frank. All right. I'm going to refresh your memory because if you're like me, you don't have one left. Anyway, Archcraft. I'm going to tell you a little something here. Um, when you pick up a guitar and you feel the neck and you run your finger down here, oh, and it's it's got a ridge here, like a Rhodesian Ridgeback dog. You know those dogs? They kind of look the same color as a, a golden retriever, except their hair short and it stands up. Rhodesian Ridgeback. Guess where they're from? Do, 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 do. Anyway, I'll just tell you. They're from Rhodesia. I'm here for you, dude. Anyway, over the next couple of episodes, we're going to be doing some work on this one, including, you see that hole right there? Yeah, not good. Do you see that crack right there? Not good. Do you see this binding here that's falling apart completely? Not good. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Um, you're going to be able to use a lot of the stuff you find in the fake luthier playlist um, to make some repairs. But before we put this on the bench, this is a multi-episode uh, fix here. We got the hole to deal with, we got bracing and stuff on the inside to deal with, and then we finally got to uh, put a cover over this or something, and that's where the junk pile stuff will come in that you know and love me for. Not like that, just regular. Okay, don't go there. Anyway, let's play a little guessing game. People that know me, no, I can't just tell you. I'll make you guess. And people really dislike that to the point where some, some of them avoid me. It's just like I had enough of this. And so what I will do is I will typically start playing the guessing game and all oh, the million question game right before Christmas. Why before Christmas? Because if you brush me off or I brush you up before Christmas, there's a lot of money that I don't spend on Christmas presents. That's right. Think about it. Use your head. All right, guessing game. What's in this bag here? Can you guess? Uh, no, it's not red, so it's not Santa's bag. Um, I can't hear you. Okay. Let me show you. Very interesting. It's got something to do with this guitar. Oh, here it comes. Ready? Do you 
you know what it is yet? Can you tell? Can you tell? It's got a handle on it. It's got some clips, but still coming out. Like one of them. Oh, there it is. The whole thing. Yeah. You know what it is? Yeah, it, this is the case that this guitar came in when I bought it. And it was this for Geely. For Geely. Mm-hmm. So, don't fall down. What happened was this. This was sitting in an attic somewhere or something. And you can tell by how tattered it is that it dried out. So, let's do some extrapolation here. That is a word, the big word that means what comes next. Or with a known set of facts. This is like when they were trying to teach you algebra and they were telling you about apples and oranges and all that. That's not a good mix. But anyway, if you find one of these and it's in a case that looks like that. What do you think that the guitar is like? You think it's pristine? Only the case was affected, right? No, the case has been through the same thing as this guitar. Remember, again, the episode up there, the eye, buying an arch top, cheap arch top, econo arch top guitar, some little things, common sense things will tell you. But anyway, apparently what happened to this guitar was somebody found it in a case. They picked the case up, the guitar slid out of it, hit the ground, resulting hole, and damage on the inside. That's what happened. So, when you go to buy one of these things, and it's in a case, look at the case. Don't just pick the case up, because you might end up with a hole in it. So anyway. That said, let's get to the bench and figure out what it is we got to do to get this repair started on this Archcraft Archtop. Let's go. All right, guys, you remember that I've admonished you to make sure that you've got your bean bag and your towel and whatever else you got there when you were working on these guitars to pad your work surface do not lay them down on just anything like so let's make sure that we can see that hole we're going to be working on right there good you see how this is chipping off here okay now i'm going to use this guitar for a table which i probably shouldn't but do you remember this box of tricks that i had from buying a vintage arch top again that eye up there is going to save your life click it anyway hey check out that logo that looks a lot like the logo on this hat vanna white's going ooh ah anyway we fondly will refer to this as my box of tricks remember it had these stumac knives in it it had the fancy flashlight MacGyver it had the McGarrett 5.0 folding mirror that lights up remember this yeah oh and it had the camera that hooks up to your phone or your computer yeah that now we're gonna grab a couple things out of here like the mirror light and the Stumac knives so we're going to put this light in here and do the F hole like that and feel where it's coming right there. And then we're going to turn this over again, very carefully turn this over and put our bean bag over here where this part is not going to be messed up by putting the camera on it or the, excuse me, light like so there we go now I can see from the inside here what's going on can we see the camera angle oh yeah there we are now what I want to show you here is you can see you grab my pointer right here you see that there's a piece of wood under there and it's got little slots cut in it every so often 
That is called kerfing. We've talked about that before. And it looks like this. It's thin, flexible wood. The reason it's flexible is because there's a series of grooves cut in it, which is, allows it to be flexible. So, do you see any kerfing here? There's some here, uh, but there's, and it ends somewhere in here. Now, if I take this knife and stick it in here, the tail block, remember the episode called Tore Up Tail Piece? Right up there. Yeah, you're going to learn about all of this back here, but this kerfing strip is missing from back in here somewhere, somewhere all the way to there. You can see that right there. Now, I talked to you about using something period correct to fix this hole, which might mean this piece of metal, this rusty piece of metal, or it might mean something newer but kind of looks period correct. What about that? That's kind of period correct, right? That looks like the record players in the early 30s. Maybe we can use a piece of this. Anyway, I'm Paul Miro, Junk Pile Guitars. It doesn't mean it's going to look good when I get done. It's going to look junky, and it's necessary that it looks junky. So, can we just put a piece of metal over this? No, we can't do that because there's nothing attached to it. And then, see where that gap is right there? Where the binding is going to go? Because we're going to do a binding repair. So, that kerfing has to be able to hold the binding. It's integral to this. And then, ultimately, we'll put something on here. But, I need to put a piece of kerfing in here. And I know, why don't I just use this one? Well, no, because this was formed to another body. I pulled it out of there. It might fit. Um, it looks to be about the right size. But no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this right. It might look junky on the outside, but on the inside, it's going to look good. So what are we going to do? Let's order some kerfing. That way we can cut a piece out of a section of kerfing that's for a guitar. And then when we go to build a guitar, we're, guess what, this much short. So we're going to make some kerfing. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, if you got a band saw or another saw, it's pretty easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do that. But the first thing we got to know is how big of a piece of curving do we need. So let me show you a trick. I'm going to take this blue painter's tape. I'm going to put it right there like so. Right along there. I want it to be longer than the piece we're going to need. Okay. Now we know that this ends right here. So I can put a mark right there, but I need to know where this one ends in relation to this tape right here. And it ends right in there somewhere. How do I know where? Well, let me show you. All right, here's that little trick. I'm going to take some of this painter's tape here, pull it off here. And I'm going to put it on this knife like this. See that? Okay. Pull it around like so. And tear that off very carefully. Now, I'm going to put this in here because I know the end is right there. I'm going to slide it in here like this until it stops, like so. Okay? Like that. Oh, I can feel it stop right there. So, how far in there does this go? Well, I can take my Sharpie. See, like so. Let me make sure that stays in there. I'll take my Sharpie here. What? Oh, you sure that's big enough? No, you know what? It's not big enough. You're right. Here, how about this one, punk? Anyway, I'm going to make a mark right there where I can see that the curving ends. And I'm going to make a mark here on the tape on the knife as well as here. See that? Now I'm going to pull this out, and we'll put that mark right there. See that? They line up, and I'll put a mark right there. That right there is how long the curving needs to be. That long. About 1 and 8 zillion twenty-sevenths of a sixteenth, or... Gotcha, metric hater. This is why these things curve. I can put this right here and go right there. And it is 106 millimeters. Easy money. 
Okay, so I'm going to have to glue something that looks like this into there, like so. And I'm going to need to clamp it so the glue sets up. So, one of these clamps is totally different. Which one should I use? Maybe this one here, yeah. Okay, Einstein. But I can't get this in here like this that well, right? And you see how jagged this is and tore up this is? So, I'm going to do everybody a favor, and I'm going to cut this out a little bit with my handy diamond wheel. There we go. No jagged edges and enough room to put in two clamps. Check that out. Looks like we might be ready to make some kerfing. What do you think? Okay. First thing we didn't know, we need to know a couple things, but the first one is how long does our kerfing need to be? Well, remember this piece of tape? Remember it had the two marks on it? That one there and that one there. Ignore that one. And maybe if we put that where that mark lines up with the clean cut there. You see that right there? Maybe a tad more. So there's enough for sanding. Maybe a little bit like that. And then we put the other end with the other mark. Our piece of kerfing needs to be that long. Next thing we need to know is when we cut these intervals in here, these grooves that allow this to be flexible, how long, or what is the span here? Well, if we pull out our little metric ruler and flip it over to the smart side, we can see that it's 10 millimeters or one centimeter. You see that right there? Okay. So we're going to cut these in an interval of that. Now, what do we use for material? Well, there's a couple things. Back to my friend Derek Hicks in Australia. Derek had a question, and it was like, how do you make your neck stronger? Well, if you run the wood this way, it wants to bow this way. But if you run it this way, it's stronger, but not wide enough for a fretboard and the rest of what we need there, see? So what happens if we put these two together match the wood or not and um, glue these together and then do our neck like this and then use a uh, router to curve that over or whatever but anyway that tip comes from my friend Derek Hicks in Australia think about that anyway that leads us into this stuff this stuff needs to be flexible so what are we going to do well they have this stuff called bull nose that you get at the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and you see it's used for cabinet and it flexes It's flexible. So when you use this stuff it comes in along and it's bull-nosed already So it's got that curve you need to glue to but the other side isn't like so anyway This is good stuff. So this is one way you can do it now All we got to do is cut a piece that's as long as we need it to be and cut those intervals in it at 10 millimeters or one centimeter so let's go over to the bandsaw and i'll show you how to do that okay guys i am at my bandsaw now what you need to know about my bandsaw is i've got this set up on one of these pedals like a sewing machine pedal that will override the on and off switch so i can stand it i can start and stop and i like that so what i've done here is i've taken this piece of bull nose that you see i have laying here and remember our tape marks the end into there. That's how long our piece of kerfing needs to be. And we've determined that the that the interval between the cuts and the kerfing is 10 millimeters. Notice that there are marks on here. They are 10 millimeters apart. Now, I don't want to go all the way through the wood. So what I have done is I have set up my band. So I cut a nice little notch, a thin notch right there. Blah! Anyway, and I've clamped it. Now notice I put the clamps on the back side so it's not in the way here. So what ends up happening is I just turn this over like this where the flat spot is down and I go through and every 
interval, I make a cut and because this is set up like this, and of course I measured it to make sure it was equidistant on both sides of the blade. And so things are nice and square. So now I can just run this through and get my kerfing cuts done very quickly. So the first thing we'll do is cut this to length. I don't want to mess with my setup, so I'll put these two pieces of wood here. I will cut this to length and then I'll just walk down this and put a kerfing cut in every 10 millimeters. Okay, this is their kerfing. This is my kerfing. Now, I want to show you a little trick. This is going to be hard to get in there, so I'm going to take my drill bit that I use for tuners, and a couple little holes. Like so. One there, one there. Now I'm going to take these little tuner screws. I'm going to pop a couple of them in right there like that. That way when I'm trying to get this thing in I've got something to hold on to because remember not only is it important that they're in here but this has to be at the right level too. We're going to be putting binding in here so when I go to slip this in here, time to quit playing around, this lets me do this and then I can glue that in and clamp it down. You see how it curves around there? Boom. Now I'll put glue on here and I'll easily clamp this with the small clamps and I'll be good to go. Okay, let me show you something else. Oh, I have almost forgot. You really don't want to be using leftover pieces of fretboard or anything like that because this stuff is typically harder than a rock and, and you don't want to use that in hobby board sometimes depending on what it is. If it's oak, you really don't want to use that but I want to show you something cool. You know when you're moving furniture and somebody knocks the edge and you get this veneer stuff that comes off? Guess what? They sell that in the hardware store in loops like this. Now, let's take our piece of kerfing that we made, like so, and get it up here where we can see it, like so, okay, and then I'm going to make a mark right there, okay. Then I'm going to take Household scissors, do not use fancy scissors, do not use hair cutting scissors. And I'm going to cut it. Look how easy that stuff cuts. I'm going to open this up and I am going to waste a bunch of time on camera. Anyway, let's get that open. Now what I do is I simply lay this on here like so. And I cut four or five of these like that. You with me? All right, with a pair of scissors, these are cool scissors, you can open bottles with them and everything. I think they even have the metric system right there. <laughs> anyway, I literally cut six pieces of this in 30 seconds. And those six pieces, when put together, are the same thickness as this. You see that? Now... This stuff is still pretty rigid, starting to cut loose right there. It hasn't broken. But this stuff is as thick, but watch this. Look. Look how flexible that is. That'll fit right to there. I might want to cut the edges down or something, but I got to glue these together. Well, guess what? See that side? Look at it. It's got that ridge type of thing, and on this side it's smooth. That's because it's bonded with adhesive. So, if I lay this one down, 
and lay another one, another one on top of it, guess what? I can take an iron. I want to show you something really cool. You'll find these at yard sales. They're really old irons. You plug them in, they heat up. Once they heat up, you can carry them anywhere. You just put this down and put it here like this. You don't want to touch this part or this part. You want to make sure that the electrical connections are good from 1920 or whatever. But anyway, you simply take this, make sure your surface is right, and you iron this, boom, layer by layer. And what happens is the heat activates the glue. And the next thing you know, this is all glued together and look how flexible it is. This is good stuff. That's another way to do that if you really don't want to go through all of this. So we're going to put one of these in here. I'm not sure which one yet. Let, I might want to make it as difficult as I can for myself. The only thing I want to make sure is that that needs to be right flush with that so I can put my piece of metal or whatever it is. But this binding right here this is going to be the rough part of this repair the binding rides this channel right here and I want to make sure that this is right flush with that at the same level as this so do it the hard way some people got to do it the hard way and do it like this or do it the easy way like this as long as you got something to screw into and for your binding to ride against you glue to the top of the main thing is you want to make sure that this is nice and flush as this is of course you won't leave those screws in there but that's it easy money all right i decided to do it the hard way instead of the easy way which is what us old men typically do because we're stubborn and remember i got my glue bot with my hide glue i always want to use hide glue in case something goes wrong i can heat it up with a blow dryer or a fancy hot gun. Now I'm just going to work this in there like that and clamp it and make sure everything's okay and let's watch glue dry. All right we got the kerfing glued in. We're going to let that set up and dry and then we're going to get on patching the hole with something. And Once that's all done then we can start working on this binding here. So I won't keep you around to watch glue to dry, and I will see you next time. Don't forget, Hound Dog Taylor, get this one link below. I need another hand. Um, anyway, see you next time.